Hi guys, you're welcome to Tabitha's house with Dr. Yemisi once again and I'm excited to be here. Mm. Today I have a wonderful guest. She's a big sister, she's a friend and I'm happy she's um, agreed to share her journey <laughs> with us. She's going to be taking us on her journey of life. Lolade went on a journey, will I say from silver spoon or some degree of very good comfort to almost having nothing or looking into your account and seeing 0 0.000 and not even sure where the next funds were coming mind you she was married at this time she had kids meaning there was also a responsibility during this season mm -hmm. seasons like that can be very trying i mean we yes we're spiritual people we're christians but we live in a world that is transactional to have a comfortable mm -hmm. life on earth you need to be able to transact with money i mean the bible says wh anyone who doesn't work should not, not eat. eat you know so share share the story what did you learn um what were the temptations how did you deal with this tough time mm. and how did you come out on the other side successful how did you come out on the other side happy how did you come out on the other side and be this person who is able to pull people who find themselves on similar journey mm. um through this kind of process Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Olola De Olushola. And this is my girl. <laughs> yep. Okay, so um, what do you want me to do? I'll try and do it as much, as quick as I can in some few minutes. But yeah, you, made it, you made it sound so easy. It wasn't as easy as that. Um, okay, so it all started, I think I met this guy in church. I was just giving my life to Christ. And at that time, my mom used to go to church, you know, even as a, you know, and my mom had become a Christian. We were born Muslims. And my mom took us to church, took me to Winners. I was just coming out from a major me mental health challenge. Mm. And I found myself in church. And church was like the holding forte for me. And when I started going to church, my life took a new meaning. Mm. It was just like I, I, I was where I was put, I needed to be at that time. The boldness of Bishop David Odipo also made me be like, man... <laughs> Who is this? You know, mm. I, I think I, I remember, I think I was like 18 then. Yes, there were about 18, 19. I was just finishing from secondary school. I was waiting. Um, and, you know, I'd done A levels and all that. Anyways, and I, I found myself in Winners. And at the time that I was in Winners, my husband too was just starting to worship in Winners Chapel. He came to um, Lagos to serve. Cut long story short. Um, he, he had seen me at that time, but I didn't even know. Me, I was just a young, happy, go lucky child. Fine, just jumping, beautiful, ebony, <laughs> you know. Just, just jumping around church and all that. And so you're one of those girls that like spiritual guys. Uh, well, I, well, I won't say no, 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 not like that. <laughs> you're a good girl. I was, I, 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 I was just thinking <laughs> sincerely. At that time, I joined church. That was the last thing on my mind. I just wanted to be happy. I just wanted to be in God's presence. I wanted. I saw this new thing that I wanted to, you know, consume me. I wanted to be where um, there was life. So I started, you know, worshiping. I was excited to be part of the youth. And the good thing, when they set up the fellowship, they said we could join our areas of interest. I mm. like music, drama, dance. Mm. So I joined what was called the Jewels Company, which was the drama unit of the youth fellowship. And it was an exciting time. Our director was very solid, excellent. And we used to drill us. A lot of people used to think they paid us in church because we used to come up with solid productions. Wow, and all that. Yeah. nice. In church then. And it was an amazing time. So one thing led to the other. Um, my them they used to go for teachings, and my director said that all of us need to get mentors. And everybody liked Brother Oli in our story because he was cool, calm, collected. He was a banker, you know. You know how church would be where they mm. put everyone together, but he was just different. There were like few of them like that. They just stood out. They were walking, you know. So it was my friend. So um, eventually we became good, you know, high, high kind of stuff and we became very good friends. And one day I'd walk to him and said, oh, I would love you to be my mentor. And he looked at me and started laughing, like, you know, I can't be your mentor. <laughs> why? Like, why? How in the world would I be your mentor? That I also need a mentor myself, but I can be a friend that you can talk to, you can listen, you know, that kind of stuff. I said, okay. So he became like that, like my big brother. 
my brothers had just relocated to the states my two brothers you know at that time at that time so i had him as a brother in my space i used to share a lot with him my aspirations my dreams he wasn't he always had an he listening he always willing to help like we were doing youth fellowship stuff or we we're having conventions you know we used to have youth conventions then he would buy me lunch mm. but, you know very correct mm-hmm. kind of guy <laughs> you know and yeah we became very good friends so Later. at the time you said yes yeah. give me four pointers that made you know that i'm safe with this guy mm. okay so at that time in youth fellowship i remember pastor being born because of blessed memory had come to speak to us fantastic woman of god and she asked us to do a list of some 10 things that we like to see in a man we wanted in a man and i wrote 10 things the only thing that was out of what I'd written was that I wanted a doll. You know how I've a tall, dark, mm. and handsome, Denzel kind of stuff. I think that was the only thing that Wally did not have. Wally was light, but he was tall, but he was calm, he was cool, he was collected, he was okay, comfortable. Um, he loved God, and he, he was very. He, ma- he always made me laugh. He was always having people, and you know that I can say something like that because he's very calm. So yeah. when he talks, you know that he can I actually make still you still blushing. Yeah, he mm. can actually still. Yeah, still makes me blush. He can actually make you laugh. So we just, you know, so four things I think I saw with Wally. First of all, a personal relationship with God. Mm-hmm. He could pray for himself. He could. He was then two kindness well he's very kind even till now he has a very very good heart he, 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 he rather i say you live for others and family and how everybody around him is going to be fine for things about himself so he's very kind um three is also the fact that he is um he knows where he's going he knows what he wants he had the vision he had a vision for his for life that, yeah. at that time you know how church everybody just cuts as you see thousands of people but you can you easily could find identify yourself. you could find yourself did you you, you could find yourself inside exactly of his so i saw that look this was like a purpose partner my getting married to this kind of person means that my destiny is sealed and you know another exciting thing about wale like you said what is that my mom really liked him my mom you know single she was a single mom and we were like friends so she used to have this window at the you know in our room where she saw all kinds of guys guys drop drop you (laughs) but the particular day that wally came first time he came to our house because after that um um so a friend like his friend was getting married and when his friend was getting married so so his best friend was getting married in ibado and i was on the train you know and he was the best man so we had gone to Ibadro and all that. On the way back, after the event, I went to tell him, I said, I'm going to Lagos to see my mom before I go back to school. I went to Babcock University in Lishan. And I was going back home first to see my mom before I returned to, to school. school. And he was like, where do you want to go? I said, I'm taking a I said, I can't take a public transport. I have a car. Let me take a shower and go to back to Lagos so that I can drive and all that. I said, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we were in the car together and, you know, he was just staring at me at the red mirror. I was like, what's going on here? And somebody eventually alighted from the car in, at camp, if you know Lagos, yeah. there, right? so it was like, oh, Lord, they come forward. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So we started going, and my mom calls. I used to come in, so I brought up my phone. I was using a 3310 Nokia. And he goes, hello, how can you be using a Nokia 3310? Uh, uh, <laughs> do, you want, do you want a new phone? I was like, of course. <laughs> anybody in this world that doesn't want a new phone? And I remember there was this Nokia 8250 that had cut eyes that <laughs> cut out from the papers. Yeah. And I put him stuck in by my bed and I said, oh, I'm going to be using this phone soon. I said, what phone do you like? I said, oh, Nokia He said, I'll get it for you tomorrow. I said, oh, nice. Oh, nice, so, nice, nice, nice. <laughs> so uh, he brought the phone to my house. So that's how we became friends. Very good. Very, very. We moved from another level of brother, sister to real good Church friends. Church and Christian. Then you to put the Christian You put the Christian aside. We, we became friends with intention. Yeah. Uh, so we became very good friends and he came he said he come to my house so the first day he came my mom saw him my mom was like oh who is that I said oh he's just my friend my mom said oh, this one is husband well, he's well. not a friend which friend <laughs> and to top things up and he came he was there and he was driving this Mazda 626 new model and he also gave my mom 25k my mom was like <laughs> <laughs> there's nobody, there's only one of your friends that have come to visit me before that has given me oh Agora new God. notes 25k. That this is the man that's oh my friend. Anyway, they say that what the mothers or what the elders see sitting down, no, even if would, you climb a ladder, you would climb it. a tree, you would say it. So, so, God bless your mom. Uh, yeah, God bless my mom. My mom was so my mom really liked him, and so from there, eventually asked me to marry him. 
which I said yes. And it was exciting, you know, his mom. Another thing that also drew me in was the fact that his siblings liked me. His mm. mom liked me. And even from the first day, I said, yes, they're buying me clothes, they're buying me shoes. She's always, she's always buying me something, buying me jewelry. I'm, I'm deducing that your love language might be gifts. Well, uh, and words of am- affirmation. Yeah, but gifts. Uh, Yo, yeah, gifts. Yeah. But not, that's not my, no, that, the irony is that's not my number one mm-hmm. gift. My number one um, love language is words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Yeah. Nice. So, and number two is gifts. It, it changes with time. Yeah. When I was much younger, it was gifts. But as I settled down, marriage and now ugh, mature, it's not words of affirmation. Mm, nice, You're doing nice, well. Nice yeah. So it changes with time. A lot of people don't know that. As you grow mature, grow older, your love language changes. Nice. Okay, so, um, after that, we got married. We were excited. We were young. The world, it was so good because I felt like, okay, so now that I'm getting married, I've always wanted to do media communication. Mm. But when we got married and I got pregnant and everything, and my husband was doing very well. In two years, my husband cha- his salary had increased to 400%. Wow. And my husband in 2008 was earning millions a month. He was wow. like, where do you want to work? Stay at home and do your own things. You want to set up a business? I like, I like feeding people. I like cooking. Um, so my husband was like, do you think of... And my brother-in-law used to come there and say, why don't you start a business around food? You know, because you cook so well. Mm. So I started this catering business. First, I called it Olola Day Chops. I used to do finger foods. So I finally started Alolis Catering. That's a story for another day. But at that time, I didn't need anything. My husband even used to give me a salary every month. He was taking very good care of me. I, uh, life was good, you know. Yeah, it, it was we were living well. Then in June 2008, something happened that changed our lives forever. Yes, so that is where mm-hmm. I need to, I really want us to go through this journey together. Yeah. Yeah. So you said to me that in June 2008, your husband yes. lost it's all all his money all his investment in an investment in an investment that went it's bad south. yes he, said, he called it he said come i need to talk to you my investment has gone south i said what does that mean if it goes south it'll come back right because no what it means is the term in investment meaning i've lost all my investments i said i was too shocked to say what because my husband is a man of God, so he's never, at that time, there's nothing like showing emotions, you know, but what we were taught at then, so my husband was strong for himself, so he lost, when we lost, when he lost all that, when he came home that night, I can never forget that day, I was wearing a white top to show how I, I remember, and he said, we need to talk, I said, I've never seen you like this, hope I'm, if it's not me, hope I've not done something, mm. he was like, no, 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 there's, there's something he did that he wants to share with me, I said, what did you do? And he goes, okay, so I took a loan of this millions. I invested with my own personal savings and all the investment has gone south. I said, what does that mean? When he told me the amount, I held him. I said, so you have that kind of money? <laughs> oh, my God. I, said, I held him. I said, so you have that kind of money? You know, and he said, yeah, that he just wanted to do it in, the investment in secret so that we could all enjoy wow, it Wow, that, that, that's the lesson, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's so we could enjoy it together. But before we got married, I said we're not going to keep anything in secret. So I felt betrayed. That was the first thing that happened to me, um, that you could do something like that without telling me. Mm. So I was angry. That was the first thing. Woke up, I slept angry, woke up angry. My husband was pacing pressure because it was the MG of his branch. So there was so much pressure trying to get money. Everybody was saying the company also tried to stay afloat. They cut their salaries. It was a very, very, very trying time. Remember, I was in working. I had agreed to do my own business. I was just doing this catering business that had no structure. I was just having fun because my husband was my husband is rich. Yeah. So I don't really need the money. You know, I didn't have capital. I didn't have business. I was just doing the business. Just keeping yourself Self, at, uh, just active. Keeping, yeah, you just, know, just keeping the big girl life. Oh, mama, she. Yes, yeah. I'll just be doing, I'll just be doing something. <laughs> yes, so and at that time, um, my mom was also very, very sick with cancer. My mom had multiple myeloma. Wow, also, so basically everything was happening at the same time, back to back. So, my husband, we just started his new journey together. I was, you know, and he said, So, what it means is that so many adjustments are going to happen. I didn't understand so because I was in shock. So, I didn't know what, what all the things he was saying, I didn't understand the gravity. So, um, June t- so it was still going to work then. My husband, my mom also died. I also lost wow, my mom you that lost year. Okay. In December, my mom died. Um, it was painful after taking care of her for like almost six years. She eventually gave, you know, um, rested. Um, 
it was it was a lot because she had done she was every child's dream like i lived with my mom almost all my life my mom was like a mad role model at that time but after that experience two years after my husband still i, I now had to take up my catering business like i, I had to mean business with my ticket let me business. stop you here mm. so um I want you to tell me the effect. So what I can get from this is, number one, you were living the baby girl life. Oh, yes. Because your husband was taking care of all your needs. Mm, yes. Even, like the Bible says, things that you never you asked. asked for. Yes. So he was doing that. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, somebody drags the carpet from under your yes. face. Yes, you wake up to reality. And you wake up to see that everything was gone. Back to zero. So what are the traumas or the events that started to affect you personally? I can hear you talk about the fact that the first thing was the betrayal of him doing such a huge investment without time. letting you know mm -hmm. and um, subconsciously not aware of the effects of his decision on his family. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one of the things that you had. That was the first thing you had to deal yes. with. Yes. And then I hear you say from that, you now started to face what? Hmm. A mental lack. Yes. You know, it wasn't only just that because after two years, um, like after, okay, so because we were past, because my husband was very a leader in charge, the first thing he did was to go back to God and say, why didn't you tell me this was going to happen? Mm. Why didn't you tell me this was going to happen? So he led us to start asking questions. Why do we claim that we have a relationship with God, but you can't speak to us? So wow. That took us, it took us on a spiritual journey. But they say you don't ask God questions. You know, that, that was what they said. That's what we grew up, you know. But this journey of wilderness has brought us to a place whereby we see that God is a God of love. He's mm. our friend. He mm. wants to talk to us more than we want to hear from him. Mm. So we can ask God questions. Sometimes we don't get answers. Um, but I feel like, you know, someone, a very, a very, one of my mentors now, Bill Johnson, said something. He said that if you cannot accept mystery as part of your journey with God, you, there's a level of revelation you will not have. Wow. So you must be able to accept it, that there's some things that won't have answers to until I get to heaven. Mm. So, you know, I, you know, the truth of it is, at that time, that was even the worst because it was still going to work. There was still salary. Like, maybe, so I, I, my husband doesn't always want me to point out the figures, but let me say, like, if somebody was earning two, then you now took it to 0 0.5. Wow. But at least you still had 0 0.5, and we could still eat. We could still. Then I think two years, so my husband started asking questions for the church. It's important to say in December 2008, because we wanted God to move. In our favor, we gave the best thing we had. We had bought this 2008 Ayanda Sonata, and we had given it to God, we gave it to the church, believing that when we do that, all our life is going to change. Sweetheart, nothing happened. So are you trying to say that if I give my car, I won't have um, a range? So um, I don't know for you, <laughs> but for me at that time, when we gave our car, nothing happened. So some people, it might happen, it might be their season. But I saw a code that says that they thought that we were buried, but they did not know that we were seeds. Mm. So what God did to us at that time is that he buried us as seeds for this new that we are experiencing. Wow. So at that time, we wanted cars, but what God saw our heart um, for his church. So what God did to us is he accepted our sacrifice as a surrender of our lives to him. So did you, you gave your brand new car? Yes, we had not even finished paying for the car out yes and started going how were you moving around knowing that you already had the child the car that we had then was even a car my husband bought for me out of one month salary to learn how to drive because i was just learning how to drive so that car became our lifeline and i think we drove it after that time for like 10 years wow because um it was the only thing we had and you know it was painful to see that you think that by you you were going to experience material things from god and that's called long story short and so we started asking questions we gave everything we gave our tvs our sound system our my husband gave his rolex gives his best things that we had we're still poor nothing happened so my it triggered us to start asking questions first god was giving us instructions concerning the spiritual now in the soul in terms of what you are saying, the reality, what we didn't realize as we are even going on that spiritual journey that I and my husband had become depressed. No. Yes. So we had become depressed. So um, one morning, um, I taking my children to school. 
My husband, I don't even know anything about school fees. What school fees? My husband would have paid three weeks before school fees. It was not my business. I was just lounging and enjoying my life. <laughs> then this particular day, um, I took my kids to school and I just wanted to enter. They just said, sorry, ma, you can't go in. I said, what happened? Why? The woman said, um, they've not paid. I said, it must be a mistake. Please check it again. She said, yes. She called their names and said, they can't come in. <sighs> Man. And my kids, they were young. So did you understand? They just stood with their bag at the gate and said, I want to go inside school. And they were like, sorry, you can't go in. And I was with them. We wept from school back home. My kids, they were screaming on top of their voices. I was crying. I was wailing. And I got home. My husband said, what happened? I said, so why didn't you tell me that you had no pay school fees? He said, like, you couldn't summon the courage to tell me that you had no pay school fees. I said, wow. So it was, it was, it was traumatic. And a lot of Christians in Australia go through these things and they try to pray their way out of it. Mm. It's a big error. Mm. And because at that time, until one day, my husband, I didn't know, had wanted to commit suicide. Wow. Yeah, because if you look all around you, you are giving God all these things. You are giving God your time. You are going on a journey with God. God is speaking to you. But your soul was in a mess. Mm. And it was because your needs were not meant. You were still suffering. You couldn't pay your bills. And all that. I was still running my catering business, but my catering business, you know, not, catering, yeah. it's not like you cannot sustain the mm. weight of bills that we had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my husband apparently became suicidal. So he had um, woken up one night and said he wanted to commit suicide. He looked at our pictures, went to the children's room, but he couldn't. It was too hard. <laughs> and I think it was just God anyway. So, so what you're saying is finance or luck can also be traumatic enough to take you into depression. Into suicide. And not it. just um, a f just the phase of depression where people say, oh, I'm not feeling good today, mm. I'm just feeling blue. But lack, mm. um, being unable to meet your needs mm -hmm. can get you to a place where you want to take your own life. Yes, because when you actually think of where you're coming from, when I married my husband, he was a normal boy in Asterix. It was good. As in my mom, everybody around us, were, they were happy for us. Like, Gladie, you made a choice. Then I wake up in the morning and I have to pray to eat. Uh. So it was all so, so, so bad. And at that time, I felt like I was losing my mind. And the only thing that could sustain me there was my relationship with God. Was severally, I, was, I had torments to leave my husband. Like, wow. I could wake up in the morning and be like, what am I doing here? Like, Lord, why am I still in this place? Did you stop loving him? Oh, yes. There was, yeah, love is, of course. <laughs> somebody <laughs> cannot meet your needs. You stop loving the person at that time. Wow. So the person just is not, you just feel like the person is not, is not up to what they used to be. The love, the only thing that sustains you then is friendship. Mm. Not love. Because the love goes cold. Mm. Yeah. Of course I did. So you, 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 just, you, you thought of picking your stuff and... Oh, yeah. There was one particular day. I always share this story at the time I go to speak. Um, you know, when they see pastors, maybe they think that you people have special blood. There's no mm -hmm. special blood. We are all human beings. It's just because we've not been telling our stories and it's time for us to tell it. And there was this, um, you know, I had gotten, I, I, I wanted money for the house. I think it was 25K. I told my husband I needed 25K. And he was like, he doesn't have money. He's on his way out to go and do something. And the way he said it was quite hot in, hot for. So when he left, I just said, you know what? I'm so, done. done. In your body, they say, I don't to read it. So I just, which means that the person we are fasting is eating. We are fasting for somebody. And, and the person is eating, eating, having a good yeah, life. Having a good life. So I just decided, that, look, I, I just pulled out my box. I started packing some things. Ask me how much I had in my account. How much? Five K. Wow. Uh, I was, so my sister was living with me then. My sister came in and said, oh, sis, what are you doing? I said, I'm packing myself. I said, you are my darling. That's my husband. You guys cannot leave yourselves. You love yourselves too much. And she said, think about it very well. And at that time, I saw my mom. Because she looks like my mom. Carbon copy of my mom. And she left. I just bowed my head. The Holy Spirit just said, I will help you if you let me. I said, you did not help me since all these days. No, now. you're Why tired. is it that I want to pack my things and <laughs> disappear? I just want to, I'm not running away. I just want uh, to take a break. Let me come in here. I've had the opportunity to speak to different people and um, hear different stories. Mm. Um, different experiences mm -hmm. from financial traumas to health, mm -hmm. emotional, mm -hmm. um, different phases. And one thing I've been able to get from there is the power of having a relationship with God. Very important. That I'll say that in the 
hardest and the darkest time of my life. Having a relationship with God. Yeah. Because you will find yourself mm-hmm. in boxes and situations, in rooms and seasons where nobody's words can comfort you. Nobody. It won't make sense. The only voice that can comfort you and speak life to you at that your lowest moment is the voice of the Spirit. It has no judgment. It has no condemnation. It just has help, love, presence. Mm. And it, ha- it has future. It has take a step at one time. Mm. It has focus on me consistently. Comfort. 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 Hope. 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 Strength. So he has hope, he has comfort, he has strength. And, you know, sometimes I look at, because now as a therapist, as a um, coach, as a marriage coach, as if, you know, working towards family life and all that, when I hear people say stuff, and yeah, psychology, psychology is fantastic. It takes you to the roots of people's problems. But some people realize that, no, the problem is deeper than psychology. Mm. The problem is they have a spiritual inclination to their problems and they need spiritual solutions. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, at that time, I, I also want to say that I also saw that I had a fault because when I got married to my husband, I became very laid back. I've always been an achiever. Um, all my life, I've always been excellent, right from my primary school. But the moment I married my husband, I saw that he was a good Christian, intercessor, he was rich. Just took a back seat, like, okay, let's, let me enjoy the, my life. Mm. This goes out to women. You are on assignment. We need to know that. God has called us women on assignment. Marriage and family life is a calling. And mm. I say it these days. It's okay to say you don't want to get married because we, we grew up with this stuff that everybody must say, everybody, everybody. But the truth of it is, if you don't have the capacity, some of us ignorantly were not built with the capacity to cope. Mm. with the demands of you're a married woman you know what i'm talking mm. about with its state of challenges a large percentage of people in psychiatric women especially women came from failed marriages wow failed relationships well i would i would investigate that. yeah yeah I, I, yeah i read that up i don't know the percentage but a large portion and also even not only women because we talk about women 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 but the truth of it is men too men are not allowed to cry men are not allowed to be vulnerable men are not allowed to share their story we even especially in this part of the world we do we think men are rocks they do they hey are you crying you are saying yourself come on you man stop crying it's not <laughs> supposed to be so you know it's not supposed to be so so i think you know at that time our relationship was tested our marriage was tested so my question is what ways was your marriage tested yeah, they love you know, at the time that they say there's no romance without finance. That's the truth. Say that again. There's there is no, no romance, romance without, without finance. finance. Mm. And when you experienced good um, finance, you've experienced, you've not ever experienced lack all your life. And you wake up and you have to pray to eat. It's a total ball game, different ball game. Um, the love went cold at the point. Um, and you, you the only thing that could sustain us then was friendship well wow. is that so we were good friends but it would just be like you wake up in the morning and be like what's the point what is really the love what are you talking about there's nothing to be loving about there's no money and there's so much friction you know so why why are we talking about in this relationship but well, there was god's love and god's love was able to overcome help us overcome the trauma of not having what we needed and wanted at that time. So if you ask me, I was tested because at the time I was just like, maybe I should even just go. You know, I just kept having those thoughts of, let me just leave. Let me just take a break. Let me just leave. Let me just take a A sensitive break. question. Were you tempted to see someone else? <sighs> was I tempted to see someone else? Like to have a boyfriend? Yeah, for financial reasons. Yeah, sometimes you have those thoughts, of course, truthfully, yes. And it's not because you don't like your husband. You just feel like maybe you should talk to another guy that mm. can understand and feel your situation. And help, maybe. Yes, and help you, exactly. Maybe you have a boyfriend out there. Yeah, those thoughts came, but I never... Fed I just, them. Yes, I never fed them. I just felt, no, this is a life commitment. And mm-hmm. I even told my husband, I woke up to him, that look, we, did, we said we're going to do this forever. And no matter what we're going through, I'm committed to you for life. 
Uh, I, know, I remember when those simple, simple assurances give my husband confidence. Wow. Yes, and he says them even today when he still speaks. But it doesn't, to tell you, you don't have those thoughts. You are lying to yourself because you see people <laughs> around you. You, you have yes. God in you. Those kind of thoughts shouldn't like come. You're a robot. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that you have, you have, you see people around you doing so well. And the truth of it is, some of them are not even as pericopo as you, as you that you're mm. praying and fasting and calling on God. You told me, me about a day where yeah, both of me. you just sat down together, yes. laughing and crying. Yes. Okay, so yeah, that. there was a there was a time that there had been a bill. Um, there was a bill that we needed to sort out. I can't remember whether it was school fees. I don't know what it was. I can't remember. My husband just bought in the bin and look, say, look at this again. We just sat at the tip of the bed, and we just both started crying. And he held my hand, I held his hand. And we looked at us, we started laughing. So why we cry? Did they cry bring the money? Oh is that guys when they were screaming? Yes, I better stop crying. Clean your eyes and let's go. We are going to sort out these bills, you know. And we clean the eyes and we just hugged ourselves and we just said we are doing this together. I see that you both knowingly or knowingly but there was some intentional um i see a picture where you both held your hands and walked through the season oh yes we did and you know the truth of the matter is number two i think you said how did you do it if i tell you how i always say that i boast in god because i don't know how i would have done it if that if i didn't have that holding force if i didn't have that voice if i didn't have that rock it's easy for you to just get tired of everything and just say, you know what, I'm done. Mm. You know, and especially when you have prayed and prayed and you don't see the practical manifestation of what you're praying for, it's more than you. You need a power that is greater than you to be able to sustain you. And I think that's where God came in. Wow. Yes. What was your role? So when oh. I mean your role, my question is, as a singular person, I know marriage um, says both of you are one, mm. but everybody brings their whole, right, mm. to make this one. Mm. My question is, how personally, what was your role in um, coming out of this dark season? And then what, what were the personal things you took from there? What, what were the personal strategies you put in place? What did you start doing actively apart from praying to get out of this season? I would say again, God. Okay, so I did not even know that I'd lost myself. So the challenges of lost yourself. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yourself. that's what I want to explain. So I had different stages of my role when we first started having those challenges because we were in winners. We were dedicated. We were first angry at God. We were asking questions. Why? 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 As spiritual people. Yes. Yes. So my role first at that time was to pray. I prayed with all my life. Yet we are still poor. So at that time, I started. I just. I had nothing else. I started to learn how to worship in good and bad. You know, it's easy for you to worship when God answers all your prayers. It's not easy for you to worship God when you cannot see in years the result of your dedication to God in asterisk. But we've come to realize now, as we go on the message, we came to the grace message. That's a story for another day. Where it is not what you do. It is what Jesus has done. So stop boasting in your filthy mm. rags and all the things you think, oh, I go to church. So Satan goes to church. Don't you don't know? Yeah, there is Satan is in church. Oh, I go to church, I go to a building, I do this for God. I'm just so Christ died for you. God became a man and died. Mm. Have you died for him? Mm. So, you know, I, I came to that point. So, I've gone through diverse seasons of what did I do. The first season, I was praying, praying for my husband, my children. I lost myself. I didn't pray for myself. I said, ah, if it's good for my husband, it's be good for me. If it's good for my husband, it's be good for my children. So, I shut down everything. I just used to pray, 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 pray as I was running my catering business. Every, all the money, I used to dump it in the house or just trying to cover up everything. My husband was also trying to recover and all that. <sighs> Until sometime in March 2019, quickly, I'd, I was tired. It was the third time we were failing. We weren't failing. This time we were actually stable. We had started our coaching business. We had become life coaches, okay. trained and, and life coaches. And I know coaches. you also yes. do some financial yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So we, my husband was doing that on the side. And I was doing, uh, I was selling what they call Ola Ola, this pound. I was doing that business on the side. I was also catering. I was working with my husband in the church. But there was, you know, I, I still felt like that place my husband was in 2008. I wanted us to go back there. So um, we had missed our rent. This time we, we, we actually could pay it. Um, it was a 1.5 million and we had paid 1 million and we needed to balance it. And our landlady needed our money and I got upset with God. I said, what is the meaning of all this? This is the third time we can't pay our rent. So I told my husband I needed it. And it came from a book I read. 
I don't know, by Dr. Esther Longe, called Did God Really Say? Because by that time, he had come into ministry and life was hard. And I, I was like, how in the world will life be this hard? We've started the ministry to us to start. Why are we still, why are you not blessing our coaching business? Why are we still going through this mm. cycle of poverty? So... I took a break. I went for a retreat with my first. I read it from that book of how God told her to go for a retreat and she heard what God wanted her to do. And I went into that retreat room. Long story short, as I entered the room, the Holy Spirit said, finally, I get your attention. And I'm like, excuse me. I've been working with my father. I've been working. He said, go and start a women's ministry. I just started laughing. I said, you have to be kidding. I've not even passed in all this one I've been doing for the past 10, 12 years. I've been in this cycle of wilderness. We to go and start. What will I tell my husband? The ministry we are doing, we've not even passed in it. It's not as if we've gotten people to come there. Mm. And not my husband wants to go and start. Who called me? What's the... He gave me days to do stuff. And after that, it was that year that, you know, a lot of stories came out in the church about the women abuse that was happening in the body of Christ. Sweetheart, I was broke. And my heart was broke. And the Holy Spirit had reminded me that that's why he wanted me to preempt that news with worship. Because he had told me to do something called throne room. Mm. And so through that journey, I started asking the Lord what he wanted me to do. And he gave me a name called Purple Lilies Foundation. So I started Purple Lilies, but I thought it was fanfare. You know, that's how we grew up. You just think, oh, you just do conference. Mm -hmm. You just invite people. I didn't know what God was calling me to war for young people. And when I started Purple Lilies, I started hearing stories of young girls... Um, first, it beat me out because I was so pained by Christian women that were abused in their marriages. That was coming out so much because I became a marriage coach. Two, that was one. Two, and it's, abuse is not necessarily beating the person. It means stepping on the person's desires to be what God has called the person to be. Mm. It means not allowing women to be what God has called them to be in the name of religion. It also meant that young people were molested by pastors and men of God so many things i can't you know that are just so totally devastating and i was like okay so is this what you're calling me to this is a lot of hard work but to the glory of god this year i've been able to prepare spiritually i'm still on that journey and by the grace of god in 2023 we come out with our first courses and the community for young women to come wow into. nice yes. nice so there was there was purpose and this journey yes so yeah. I, this is i say um, God, why didn't you tell me 14 years ago in June 2000? In this June 2022, it was exactly 14 years that incident happened in my home that changed our lives forever. Took my husband from banking to become a man of God and took me also from there to find myself. Now I am in my purpose. I'm a, I'm a woman of God, mother of nations, fighting for young women, worrying for purpose for the young The journey, women. did it affect your relationships? Oh, yes. <laughs> Betrayals. It did, and but as, as as a lady or as a couple, did you affect our relationship? Yes, as as individuals, and of course as a couple, we lost friends. Um, some people didn't understand the journey, and we lost um, even till now. So people still feel you sure this is what God has called you to do. But the signs are beginning to is beginning to happen. Mm. Uh, my husband now is an MD of a, an, of a startup tech company mm -hmm. that is going places by the grace of God. Wow. Um, um, we are running a marriage company now and we have good clients that we've had results. Um, also starting, you know, like I said, the Purple Lilies Foundation courses for young women and we are praying and preparing for that because we realize it's a war. It's mm. not rocket science mm. and it's not fanfare. Mm. Um, there's a lot of mistakes people do. Uh, I've come to realize that God is asking us to repair a generation. God is asking us to repair, and that's a lot of work. Mm. You have to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit to do it. It's not fanfare, it's not noise, it's not social media noise. It's able to fight for generations. And mm. Yes, and yeah, that's it. He ended in praise. He, he did end, end it, in praise. Oh, yes. And even in, in, even in our church that we have found, that's a story for another day, where God brought us into the grace message and the love message. When we first started it then, we didn't understand. When God said, no, it's not calling us to a building, we're like, what does that mean? So we tried to struggle and put ourselves. But today, it's amazing. We're on the third, you know, stuff of our of our discipleship program. And it is just Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. So you went through this journey 
journey yes. and now you have turned this journey yes. you have allowed god to use you yes to touch other lives yes and begin to build women yes um, and also writing my book oh congratulations yeah um before we leave the studio mm. i like to say um one of the other um one of the things i like to point out to is with women and the works of our hands yeah um don't stay docile don't Do you stay want to talk to <laughs> that? don't stay docile Please. Don't she? She talked about losing her identity yeah. because it seemed like all the this needs were. Met. Yeah. I understand that the role of the father or the husband is mm. the provider, mm. but that doesn't mean there should not be. You shouldn't bring. You shouldn't be capable of. Men don't even want to marry young men. This this don't want to marry. You, said you wanted to speak on yes, that. Yes, young men don't want to marry a woman that has nothing to offer. Um, a lot of people that just think it's all about wigs and nails and that's not it. A lot of serious minded young men these days want a woman and it's vice versa. Women too don't want to marry a man that's going to, you know, not, not going to be a man. So these days we have woken up to what marriage should be, the ideal, especially in the church, the right way God has ordained marriage to be. And the truth of it is everybody I, there's an awakening and it's important that as women i tell women when women come to me for counseling for coaching for therapy for whatever i say look god has not called you to idol worship when you turn your man to everything that's i you've turned you've replaced that person with god mm. and that's idol worship mm. god has not called you into that god has called you to find yourself and partner with your spouse to fulfill a god-given assignment wow, so when you get to the point whereby you lose your identity you have nothing to offer your, your, your marriage is gonna is this days and time that women are moving the cheese men are doing great things together you can sit and say even if it is changing you can sell something be somebody what's what's the extreme um i hear you say that um we shouldn't lose our identity. Mm -hmm. Still find yourself mm -hmm. inside of that marriage financially, spiritually, mm -hmm. meaning in emotionally. your emotionally, your spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. How about a case where someone says, I'm, I'm doing all my best as a woman, I'm working, I'm putting all my money into the home, but my husband is financially irresponsible in this marriage. How do I manage this situation? Well, let's start from the beginning. Um, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, as you know, that's our Euro believes and our foundations. When Eve messed up, God did not go and meet Eve. Who did you go and meet? Adam. So that's the leader. The meaning of husband is house bond. Meaning somebody that bonds the whole family together. Mm. Is house bond. Is the leader. The issue we have in our society is because a lot of women, even Christian women, are becoming independent, financially independent. Everybody just wants to be on Would their own. Would you say own. that's a problem? It's not a problem. Don't get me wrong. Because I also advocated for that in yeah. our past discussions. But when you get to a point where you say, mm, and now, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a state of a mind. When you get to, I don't need them. I need you. <laughs> Please, my money, I can't invest it. Like you said, it's not. I need you to spend the money on me. I'm your wife. Spend it. A man wants to be a man. Let men be men. But you, Kochi, say that you cannot determine somebody's actions and you cannot be responsible for somebody's actions. actions. So this person is saying. I am doing my best as a woman. Yeah. But I am married to a financial irresponsible man, meaning then, he's refusing to pay bills, he's refusing to um pay the children's school fees. He would rather want to spend his money on other things that make him happy, parties, clubs and stuff like that. How do I navigate? Think about it. A right thinking young man, a right thinking man that has his senses right will not choose parties above his family responsibilities. Mm. So there's something somewhere that's gone wrong. And that's why we need therapists. That's why we need coaches to help you in coaching rooms to sit down and look at the problem. So you feel that for someone to start manifesting this kind of characteristic, something, went wrong. Yes. something has gone wrong. wrong. Yes. Um, there's some underlining foundation. foundation. Yes. So how, do, how should this person navigate? How should this woman navigate? 
talk to okay so my name is Ololadi Olushala you can send me a DM on Instagram and you know we could sit down and talk about it you can have assessment sessions and let us know the root cause a lot of people don't even know sometimes psychology the way the person grew up if he had an irresponsible father there is a 50 percent you chance. know chance that he's going to that become irresponsible at one point because we don't know the power of the subconscious we don't understand that but that's what we coaches and therapists do we go to the root of the problem you are seeing that oh my husband is choosing parties above my bills but we are seeing factors that you don't know exist that is turning that guy's life sometimes the guy or the woman in some cases they're not even aware Mm. that these things that they are doing are stored up in their subconscious. Mm. And that's why you need, we say now that Jesus and therapy is very okay. <laughs> Jesus and therapy. Yes, yes. Jesus and therapy yes, is very, very okay. So you think there's still some positive light at the end of the of tunnel? Of course, there's a positive light. Because when, when you sit down and you hear these people, some people go like, oh, my dad was irresponsible and I didn't know he's affecting me. Mm. Where do you take that from? So sometimes you don't even, some people are stuck in childhood trauma. So some people are stuck in a place whereby their fathers or their mothers were ill-treated in, you know, in their own families and they never got past it and they don't even know mm. that that's where they are. Yeah, mm. so that's it. Yeah, so there's light at the end of the, the tunnel. tunnel. Yes. Jesus plus therapy can is very, help very, you. Very. Let me say that again. Jesus plus therapy can help you way through that kind of storm. Yes, it can. Mm. And, you know, um, the, the beauty of someone like um, I and my husband is we do our marriage coaching together. Because we realized, why, why is it just women? Because women talk about their issues mm. in their environment. Women are vulnerable. Women are natural emotional beings, so they talk, we talk. But we realized that talking with who? You need your husband to make your marriage work. So someone like my husband started, I, it was my idea, but my husband decided to pack that. We say, oh, Lalade is my boss when it mm. comes to marriage coaching. But the truth of it is there's no boss. We saw that the moment the men started coming into the coaching rooms and they saw my husband, there was this piece, oh, finally I get somebody that will see it from my perspective. Mm. So it's important that we also listen to the men. That's very key. Mm. Very, very mm. key. Mm. Because we all grew up not listening to the men, not allowing them cry, not allowing Now we have a lot of Mm. Grown ups, so he might men. be seeking some validation. Yes, and from some a lot of people loosely use a lot of narcissism and other, but that's the truth. Mm. Um, um, a lot of us grew up in an environment whereby men were made to look, make marriage look as if it's, it's not a big deal. Wow. The woman is giving everything like our mothers did, mm -hmm. and those cycles now present generation don't want that. People want a man that is committed to them, committed to the institution of marriage. Yes. Wow, I think the next time we bring you on, we'll be talking about mar marriage core. Proper. Mm -hmm. But today, I'm happy you were able to share. You were you allowed us into your space. You yeah. were vulnerable enough to let us see the journey of what a financial crisis and marriage can, can do, and yes. how it can traumatize you yeah. um, psychologically so, yeah. as a spouse or um, as a team. Yeah, you know? yeah. And most importantly, you must heal. You must heal. You can't forever carry burdens, unforgiveness, bitterness. Marriage, all sorts of things happen in marriage. You must choose your spouse every day. You must heal. You must get to the point whereby it's hard to be in a loveless marriage. Mm. It's hard to love somebody that doesn't love you back. Mm. It's a lot of trauma to every day wake up to somebody that cannot kiss you and love you from the depth of Rejection. your heart. Mm. Yes, it's, it's hard to, you know, have make sense, you know, make love, sorry. Make love to somebody that is not heartfelt it's just it's hard to be in a loveless marriage mm. so it's important that we all get to that point and realize that even as africans as we study as therapists and coaches study our um, you know marriage and family life belief systems there has to be a lot of healing there has to be a lot of there healing has to be a lot and of there has healing. to be a lot of unlearning unlearning and, and relearning mm. and um accepting that our world has changed our world has changed yes. and we need to start changing things With, and yes truth. and do things the right way mm. god's way yeah, thank you. Shh. I think that's good.